In 30 AD, what would Jesus look like to a Bedouin from Arabia? Congratulations to Roger, who was the winner of our last book giveaway of Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. If you want to win a free copy of 30 AD, you need to like, subscribe, and follow the link below and sign up for John's newsletter. The year is 30 AD, during the first year of Jesus of Nazareth's three-year ministry. The story opens in the Arabian desert with Mavia, the daughter of one of the most powerful Bedouin sheiks in the region. Mavia's position as Sheik's daughter does not guarantee her privileges. Quite the opposite. She is a woman, a step above livestock in their eyes. Her mother was from an outcast Bedou tribe, and Mavia also bore a son outside of marriage while a slave in Egypt. Three strikes against her, until the day her father needed her the most, the day when an enemy tribe rode into town, took over, maimed her father, and killed her infant son. Her father puts her on a desperate quest for Roman aid. She sets on her journey with the help of two of her father's best warriors, Saba, who speaks more with his sword than his voice, and Judah, a Jew who comes from a tribe that can read the stars. Mavia must secure an unlikely audience with King Herod of the Jews. Her path leads her unexpectedly to another man, an enigmatic teacher who speaks of a way in this life which offers greater power than any kingdom. His name is Yeshua, and his words turn everything on its head. This is what to expect from the book. John, is there anything outstanding? Um, as far as this, this, this list goes, I would say the uh, death of her infant son was probably the most tragic and gripping. Moving this, if I were to rate this as a movie, it would be a PG-13. I would say PG-13 is a good rating on this one. Keep that in mind. So my personal reaction to this one is that it's a pretty good book all in all. It's more emotionally driven than action driven. Um, it is from a historical standpoint. He tries to keep as close as he can to historical events. Um, be aware though, that some of the theology kind of gave me some red flags. He does use a lot of terms that are commonly used in progressive Christianity, as well as focusing heavily, in fact, solely on God's love with a lack of focus on God's judgment. He says it multiple times that Yeshua doesn't judge, nor does his father judge. Now, I think that he's referring to condemnation of her past in that context, but it can be taken a wrong way very easily. So I would I would agree with you. It was good, but not great. The descriptions of the desert, uh, about Jesus' mother Mary living in Nazareth, um, the, the poverty the, the situation she had there, uh, fear of the storm that comes through on, on Galilee, on the Lake of Galilee, um, all these make it realistic. And it was good historical context talking about the neighbors alongside Israel. Because we get a, when we read the Bible, we have such a focus on just Israel itself, not really understanding the uh, political context outside of its borders. And so that was that was pretty interesting. But I felt it meandered quite a bit. Uh, romance back and forth. There was travels going uh, that here, there, and you're kind of wondering where everything's going. It was realistic on somebody making this journey, but not necessarily great storytelling. And one thing that a reader needs to look at, if they're saying, oh, this is going to be about Jesus, Jesus doesn't come through, come into the book until about halfway through. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. that he doesn't specify that it's not condemning her specifically for her situation, but that Jesus is the judge. He doesn't say that in the book. He makes it sound like just God doesn't judge at all. And that's not biblically accurate. If I was going to give this book to anyone intending them to read it, I'd say you possibly could use this in a ministry to a Muslim woman. Um, again, this is a really emotionally driven. There's a lot of honor and shame society in this. That's a 
big motivator for the main character. So I'd say it might open up doors there. I would just be aware of those theological issues I mentioned beforehand, because those can be a massive issue. Yeah, I would agree that it's good for women and also for anybody who's interested in uh, historical novels, uh, especially around the life of Jesus. You don't get a whole lot of Jesus ministry in here, but it is good to see what's going on in Petra, what's going on in Arabia, um, Herod's disposition. I think he did a pretty good job of, of making him the real pig that he is. So good for that. So that was our quick review on 30 AD. Next month, we will be reviewing 33 AD and seeing where this story continues. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And again, if you want to enter into the giveaway, make sure to sign up for John's newsletter. The link is in the description below.